All right, so it's been a while since I actually recorded the video for the channel and as it happens, I have a thing that I kind of want to change in uh, one of the tools that I've made. So just to, for a brief kind of explanation of the tool, it's a, well, for now it's a database migration tool. Uh, it really just allows you to add and apply and roll back and delete migrations in a database. Nothing super fancy, it's really quite simple. Um, so for example, if we have a database and you can see here that we have one on localhost, etc., we can list the migrations that are in the database uh, and so on. And so one of the things here that kind of annoys me is that we can see here if we look at, so here's the output, by the way, for uh, a database where we haven't applied these two uh, migrations. Uh, we can see here in the commands, we have several commands. We have migrate, rollback, add migration, list migrations, update migrations, remove migration. Uh, not all of these actually require all of the things. So as an example of this add migration is really just it's a command that allows you to add a new migration file. It doesn't need to connect to the database. It doesn't need to do anything interesting there. So it's kind of pointless in a way. It doesn't need access to pretty much anything. Right. So there's a certain amount of like, we don't really need this. Right. Um, so what I was thinking is that we'll make this kind of we'll split stuff up a little bit more, right? Because yeah, these commands don't really require the same things, but we can see if we look at the types here, they all run in Rio app, right? So they all have access to this app thing, right? But it's obviously the case here that add migration, it only really needs a thing from your options here. And then it gets the current timestamp. And then it writes a file. So it's really not like, for example, migrate all here, which needs to run database actions and so on. Or list migrations that obviously needs to list the migration. So it needs to talk to the database and so on. So it would we kind of want to split this stuff up, right? And what I was thinking is that we'll modify the commands to sort of take their dependencies in a way. Um, so yeah, this means effectively splitting out stuff from options here. It's also probably the case that not everything needs a migration path, right? So if we looked at, look at migrate all, it does need the path add migration needs because it needs to put a file there, update migrations, but list up migrations doesn't need it, then remove migration doesn't. So yeah, we probably should split this out as well, right? So I think that's probably an idea. Now, the question here, I suppose, is kind of, how exactly we do this. So let's let's first split out this connect info. Well, this is so this is actually a structure called connect info. Basically, these fields here. So what we could actually do is we could say Yeah, we could just sort of split that out. An app is still going to require an SQL pool. I suppose that's fine. It's going to have the options with the migration path, which I suppose is fair enough. Well, Okay, let's try to pull this out sort of piece by piece. Uh, first, I'm going to actually 
do something for kind of sanity's sake. Migrations path. This is going to be a file path. Uh, here we can just do deriving with QShell. Uh, fold map. And this is just something I do kind of by default, honestly. Um, this is just so lenses work better with uh, these. Uh, so we're going to get a lens here called unwrap that gives us the file path inside. So we don't need, even need to call on migrations path. We just call unwrap uh, when we lens into stuff. So that's going to be better. Uh, list migrations doesn't need anything. Update migrations does need a migrations path. Add migration does need a migrations path. Let's look at that. Migrate does need it, right? So if we look at these migrations path add we have migrate all that's migrate add migration update migrations and that's it yeah I think that should be it so let's add that to sort of how how we're parsing stuff I suppose this is now no longer in options because it's sort of for all of the ones that actually do care Now, I suppose this actually kind of just needs to take this as an argument now, migrations path then, which is actually going to be nicer in a way. And so here's the thing that we get like this. We can just say uh, migrations path unwrap, and this works in, works in a nested fashion. Uh, fashion. So if you do did unwrap here, for example, you would unwrap twice, and it would have the correct type and stuff. So it's fairly nice that way. Uh, this takes a string and a migrations path. And here yeah I'm gonna be we're gonna do this maybe we should do that up here as well I kind of do feel like we because this is sort of the last station there's nothing here that needs this stuff uh, otherwise I would just sort of leave it and then things could use the things that they needed and so on uh, This is all fine, but of course there are other places here that need to sort of are modified now we actually need to change the parsing of this right so in main uh, we're gonna have issues so I'm gonna do stack build fast file watch uh, we'll see that this fails which is fine the error might be annoying because we're dealing with kind of long swaths of code or whatever uh, the reason this is erroring out is of course we've changed options so first of all it no longer has this migrations path uh, so we can't actually parse that there. Now the commands actually take this instead. So the thing that we had down there is actually what we need for most of these or some of them. 
So that would be, for example, migrate. Uh, migrate needs the path. So for example, we would do this here. Uh, actually, let's kind of bake this in, right? So I'm gonna do parse migrations path, parser of migrations path. Now we should be able to just use this, right? So parse migrations path, for example. Uh, roll back an amount of migrations that doesn't need. Add a migration in the migrations directory. Parse migrations path. And so, of course, here, the reason we, we have this constructor here, we f map this to sort of bring it into the parser context, right? This is a parser of something, which means, of course, it's a it's a functor, right? Also happens to be an applicative. So when we're already in this context here, we expect more arguments. So what we're expecting is a function that takes something more, and so on. But this is already in the parser context. And we f uh, we apply this with the spaceship operator, right? The Tie Fighter to parse migrations path, which should allow us to sort of uh, to apply it to a bigger uh, context or parse migrations path remove I think this one is kind of fine there and there you go right now we've added this to the parsing of the actual commands and so this no longer is uh, it should shouldn't be in the oh hang on uh, stack stack install if I run be help here we don't have migrations path here now instead we have it in migrate help for example right migrations so it's taken by the command instead which is basically what we want we also want a majority of the other stuff to be taken there as well so now we kind of do a second step Right. We're saying connect info should be there as well. And this happens to be uh, coming from here. Database PostgreSQL simple. That's the connect info. Migrate, of course, needs this. This much we, we can say for sure. Connect info is needed there as well. Adding a migration is the one that doesn't need this, right? Uh, so here, connect info is needed. List migration certainly needs it as well. If we're going to remove one, we're going to need it. And now we can basically remove most of the stuff from here, which actually makes this kind of a new type, new type options, right? And here we could say, you know, by convention on options, you know, but I don't really want to do that, if I'm being completely honest. Instead, we might just say this, right? Yeah. I'll be honest, I don't like having new types when they're sort of, I don't know. I don't like this shape necessarily. I would rather we actually had two options, but it is what it is. Um, remove that comment by the way so here right this is in run first of all this now takes connect info rollback also takes connect info update migrations connect info some of these of course like this some of this I am um, Actually, assuming it's going to change because we already have an app here, which means connective info is not really relevant here. Actually, we can delete this for now. Uh, this is how we construct the connection info that we're using. 
here so you can see actually connect info here but this is now going to come in in the command instead so we don't really need to consider this so much um, and I would actually argue here there's maybe a nicer way to kind of do part of this stuff so I'm actually going to say create app here take up it takes options and then app command no options and connect info and creates an IO app create app options connect info we're gonna do part of this stuff certainly if not pretty much everything in here we can we can sort of just say pure app here right and run let's say add migration takes a name and a migrations path add migration is this even valid though let's see right these don't come come from options anymore uh, of course and this connection info we don't actually need at all because this comes from as an argument couldn't match expect to type io with actual type rio app yeah this is kind of looking promising add migration now the question is question here maybe is if I change this to IO yeah this type checks pattern match is not non exhaustive sure does that migration have zero yeah maybe We have migrate rollback, update migration, system migration. Migrate takes certainly a migrations path and a connect info. So let's figure this one out and then we can figure the ones the other ones out. Oh, hang on. That's kind of yeah. Hang on. Is that? Yeah, that's actually. App to IO. No. We don't need app here. Run Rio. App. Migrate all. Yep. Okay. So that's basically it. Uh, rollback. This also takes connect info though. Update migrations with this migrations. Let's copy some of these and just sort of. I'm actually going to copy them here and then I'm going to show something. Some of these are going to turn out uh, wrong, if we're being completely honest. It is what it is. Mm, remove migrations, connect info. Why would this be with a 
What's it? What's that even mean? What? Remove migration. Oh, it is with Prime. Jesus. Okay, Copilot just kills it. Uh, list migrations takes a boolean. Right, because it takes options or both. Ah, this doesn't need this, it's already... There you go. Now we need to parse this, of course. And the key here is that we need this connect info. Right? This comes from the commands. So obviously, by the way, I'm going to pull this down here. Uh, and so now every command needs to be able to parse this as needed, this connect info. Uh, this is actually the missing ingredient here. So we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, let me just pull this up because I know we're going to need it. So now we have this connect info that we need to be able to parse. Uh, so I'm going to just sort of borrow this structure and this is because I'm lazy um, there is a certain amount of laziness that sort of just kind of happens honestly when you use uh, when you use the uh, copilot stuff if I'm being honest uh, certainly you, you you need to think a little bit but at the same time it's uh, it is oddly kind of uh, you get almost addicted in a way <laughs> if I'm being honest uh, it's an odd feeling. This will now be uppercase H, um, actually. Is that actually just type checking? I suppose we'll see. Um, now, what we have to do here is we basically have to change these, the ones that also need connection info, right? Uh, parse connection. Well, connect info rather. So that's my great rollback certainly needs this as well. Opa. Uh, add migration doesn't need it. List migration needs it. And here, because we have pure, we actually need to do this parse connect info. Update migrations needs this. Remove migration. Yes, it does need it. And now it seems like the parsing is done. Obviously, we're going to check this. So we're going to run a few commands and so on and just see, hey, you know, what's actually needed. But I do think that we have kind of solved this issue to some degree. Uh, let's see. So help now only shows help and version and also verbose, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is what we want. Now, if I go to, for example, add migration, we should be seeing that it really only requires the, first of all, the, the name is an argument, but also the migrations path. So QDB add migration, migration name, right? Also the migrations path. Now, this is, this is good. So for example, I can now completely, I don't need to care about database connection info or anything when I add the migration. So I say add migration, um, test name. Uh, actually, I don't really want that to be at the end. I don't like that at all. The migrations path, path here is test migrations. 
And now if we do te LL test migrations, we should see it's added here. And so we can do less test migrations and then 2022.07 and that's our file. So this works. Um, so QDB help, QDB, let's say, migrate. Migrate is definitely going to need essentially everything. Uh, update migrations also needs essentially everything. So we should see basically all of the stuff here. Uh, right, migrations path, host, port, user, database, password, uh, and so on. So this definitely do does require everything. Um, I have kind of a second part that I was planning to uh, record tomorrow, probably, uh, where we're going to add default conf configuration files for this. So we're going to have a YAML file. It, it's going to, the program looks for this file in your directory, or you, you could also specify it. We're probably going to add a command line option for this. With this file, you can set uh, which values to use for these. So you don't have to specify them all the time, right? Which is going to mean effectively that these aren't required, these things, right? Well, so we're basically going to say, you know, host is not required if we can read it from your YAML file. Uh, port, user, database, etc. Password, yeah, probably same there. Uh, we might read this one from the env and so on. Uh, we could actually add env support already, uh, of course. I'm not sure, actually. A little bit... Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, so basically what we've done here now is we've added kind of... We've split the dependencies, the data dependencies, up to kind of where they're actually needed. So previously, structure we had here for options was previously this right options had everything and i mean this is fine you're starting out to write you're writing your application and so on you basically probably have all the kind of one or two things that you're implementing and so on and it all seems very uniform at the time right but a very easy okay well easy i don't know about but simple way of kind of structuring this such that everything has what it needs to is to simply think what are my commands, right? So what are my commands and what do they need in the end, right? So rolling back does not care about migration paths, right? Adding a migration does not care about connect info, right? These commands, they have what they need. When you construct them, you have to guarantee that they have these things. That's where parsing comes in. When we parse these things, we need these things to be constructed, which means we have to use them here and so on. So you have this cascade of good changes, right? Changes that you need to make for things to make sense, right? So just by adding these here, we've made it so that these constructors now require these arguments, which makes it so that we have to be able to parse them correctly here, right? Which makes it also so that we have to actually use these values here, right? in a way that makes sense, right? We could also kind of go one level deeper here and say, well, it could be the case. For example, here we have Rio app, right? Um, you could say, well, no, I'm going to not have Rio app. I'm going to have M. So just to illustrate kind of what that would entail here. Let's say I did have M here. First of all, if we just do M, we're gonna get no instance instance for monad and, and stuff like this. So let, let's add monad. And this is not the end case here. Could not deduce monad throw. Okay, so something needs monad throw, right? Okay, monad IO. Now, by the way, we can remove monad because it's implicit in all of these other ones. Uh, could not deduce has Postgre PostgreSQL pool, right? So that's 
one interesting uh, thing here. Utility database has PostgreSQL pool and then we pull in the constructors for this. Uh, now we can just say has PostgreSQL pool env, right? Because an env has a pool. So now we have to say monad reader env m. And now suddenly it's kind of like, hmm, okay. It's fairly clear what this function actually kind of needs to do its work. The reason we can't actually take all of this stuff necessarily as a dependency straight up is because uh, run db is actually structured like this, right? We could take these arguments, um, the pool and so on here, and then cr create this real environment and so on. But honestly, it's kind of pointless if we're being really honest. So this would also kind of be a way of, to be much more specific about what we're doing, honestly. Uh, also allows you very easy kind of it allows you to calibrate some of the assumptions that you're actually making in your application, right? Because we have Rio app in most of these here. That's a very broad thing. Everything in app, even if it grows to twice the size, everything will be accessible here, which doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't suggest a lot about what this function is actually doing. Of course, we know that it's called rollback and we can kind of assume what that means and so on. But nailing down some of these can be very helpful uh, a lot of the time. We don't need to do that now though. So I'm just gonna leave this as a Rio app like this. We have a fairly neat kind of way here of saying, okay, so at least it needs a migration path uh, and so on. So uh, yeah, we don't need a pool here yet. Let's just do this. Oh yeah, so that's uh, that's it for today, I guess. And like I said, I'm probably gonna return fairly soon to uh, to add the uh, the kind of um, hang on, what was I thinking? Ah, right, to add YAML files as a way of doing this. Potentially, we could go only with env. Uh, files actually, but I'm a little bit skeptical about that maybe. Um, but yeah, some kind of configuration file we're gonna add, and probably YAML. I, I, I think YAML could be a reasonable idea uh, for this. And then we can read that, and if if we can't read from the CLI, for example, we would then say, oh, you know, here's the the stuff you can get from the YAML file, for example. This is actually gonna require us to change some of the commands and so on again, because of course, if you're reading the command from the CLI and that suddenly doesn't require everything, then of, co of course you're gonna to have to change your logic, which will probably entail actually saying, hey, this maybe has a connect info and so on, or we're gonna separate the arguments and say, no, we have a, a structure where all of the fields are maybe, host is maybe, a database is maybe, and so on. Um, and yeah, we'll see sort of how this shapes up. Uh, we'll deal with that in that video. For now, uh, we are going to stage some of this stuff. Most of this looks uh, exactly as I would expect. data dependencies to app commands. This, uh,
all right and yeah that's it for today for today and i will see you some other time ciao